everybody. This is Joe Larson and Chuck Schultz here with our, one of our guests tonight, John Visconti III. And welcome to the 505 on Racing Show. Tonight, we are celebrating show number 400. We're going to talk about some of the things that went on this week in racing. And we're also going to just share some memories about the show and some of the things we did when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Just saw as we went to that first break, an image, John Cookie Visconti uh, Jr., who yep. uh, passed away recently. Um, tonight's show, 400, is dedicated to Cookie's memory and what he did for racing and, and what you. he's raised here. So Thank you. Thank you both. Um, he, was, uh, he was good to us. It was when he could, when he was healthy, he watched our show made his comments, called me the next day, um, made us feel good. And uh, we had tried to get him down here. Yeah, it was tough that time, I and, remember. And, yeah. and he had trouble, so um, tonight's show is in his memory. Thank anyway, you. thank you and for all the, the memories that we had so, and, uh, over the years. Um, but uh, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, uh, they were off this past weekend. They will be in Darlington September 1st for the uh, the, the, the race this weekend, <laughs> the Xfinity will also be at Darlington this weekend. They'll be Saturday. And uh, the Xfinity series, they were at Road America this past weekend. Uh, we have results for that to, to, to show up, everybody. Christopher Bell was the leader there, the winner there. Austin Sidrick was second. Tyler Reddick was third. Noah Gregson, fourth. Kaz Growler was fifth. Justin Haley was sixth. Followed by Chase Briscoe in seventh. Jeremy Clements in eighth. Justin Algaia ninth and Cole Custer rounding out the top ten. The Gander Outdoor Truck Series uh, race was at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Uh, results are like this. Brett Moffitt was the winner, followed by Alex Tagliani. Ben Rhodes was third, Sheldon Creed fourth, Austin Hill fifth, Johnny Sorter was sixth. Followed by Stuart Friesen seventh, Ross Chastain eighth, Tyler Ingram ninth, and Raphael Desaad rounding out the top ten. Ah, uh, yes, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Show 400. Chuck, who would have thought? There's a lot of shows. A lot of shows. You know, uh, for those who don't know, Chuck is the, and, and his wife Bonnie are the mastermind, not only behind the, the 505 on Ration Show, but the, in, the wow, <laughs> I'm messing it all up today, the Enravio <laughs> TV network uh, with, through Ultimate Media. And, uh, some 400 shows again over eight years ago. My phone rang, and uh, I'll let you tell the story. Well, I mean, uh, some people don't realize they think that this is a quick thing to put together. And the hours, this is almost like having a race team. The amount of hours that you put in during the week, even when you don't crash the show, you put the hours in during the week, and you know, for an hour show, you might put in eight, 10, 12 hours. You know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of time. I mean, when you think about 400 shows, think yeah. about how much time and effort we put in over the last eight years. Yeah. And, 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 but, I mean, you know how I do things. I mean, you do, I do it exactly the way I did the race team. Oh, so yeah. when I called you up and I said, hey, uh, you know, you want to do a show? You're like, where do I go and what do, what do I got to do? Yeah, cause I mean, because you knew it was going to be 120%. Oh, yeah. Because that's all I do. Yeah. It was, uh, when he asked me, he says, uh, Joe, we have this show. And when you come down and talk to us about it, I said, just tell me what time and where I'll be there. And, and I really, I'll, you know, I'll be honest, I did not think for a minute that I was going to last over eight years. <laughs> I just didn't. And, you know, we've had our ups and downs with NASCAR, with racetracks, and with, with people. And, but at the end, we always came out ahead. We always did what, what was right for everybody. And um, you know, we, we had a few guest co-hosts along the way, some uh, co-hosts. Right from the get-go, 
what a way to break the world land speed record. Didn't and never came back. Never came back. <laughs> you know, we would have still loved him because he didn't make break the record. But you know, one of the things we did was every every year it got better. Yes. I mean, we constantly kept upgrading. We constantly kept pushing it ahead. And when I started this uh, almost 15 years ago, I mean, now today everybody has a has a cell phone in their hand. Right. Everybody knows what a smartphone is. And uh, I think everybody at this point knows what streaming is. Oh, yeah. And when I did this 15 years ago, there was no word. There was no phrase called streaming. No. Nobody knew what streaming was. Yeah. I would get emails back from people, and they're like, I don't get it. I don't understand. How does this work? You remember the meetings we had? Yeah. We had 23, 26 shows down here, and there were people from 26 shows. And I would say, one day, you're going to be watching, everybody's going to be watching videos on their phone. They're not going to be watching TV anymore. Right. They, they laughed at me out loud. They did. You remember that? Yes. They, they thought I was making a joke. Yes, they did. They thought I was making a joke. And I said, everybody's going to be watching videos on their phone. It's going to be commonplace. They laughed at me. Yeah. No way. It'll never happen. Now, everybody's got a cell phone tattooed to their hand because yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. And think about it. I mean, 14 years ago, how many kids don't know right. before the internet or before cell phones? You know, all the millennials now. And, and we've come a long way. I can remember sitting in the other studio with that big board in front of me. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. People were calling in. I couldn't hear them, but I was just shaking my head. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're talking about the, I did, get in this sweet spot. And I'm in my ear, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Where's the sweet spot? <laughs> Well, you know, early on, we were trying to not have, you know, four or five people running a show. Right. You know, but back in that day, there was no equipment. You couldn't just call somebody up and say, hey, I need to, I'm going to do this. Right. What do I need to get? Yeah. They were like, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> because nobody did it. And for us to do it live, I mean, it's, today it sounds ridiculous, but back then you had YouTube videos. You could put your YouTube video, but you couldn't do it live. Right. And we were doing it live, and everybody wanted to know, how are they doing? It's like right. being at the right. racetrack. Right. Right. Once you start running good, everybody's right. like, what is he doing? What's he doing? How's he doing that? Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. Yeah. I would call up uh, most of the big suppliers, B&H, and I'd say, hey, listen, I want to buy this. So will this do this? I don't know, but if it does, let us know. <laughs> I mean, this is the biggest guy in the country. And he's like, I don't know if it'll do it. Yeah. They're, they're the tech guys. Yeah. And I had 12 computers doing all kinds of different stuff, and I made it work. You did. And we had, you know, and now every show is like, oh, uh, you know, tweet with the hosts while the show's live. They all want to be live now. Right. right. They all want to be They all want to be us. And, and, and I mean, it sounds it sounds like I'm I'm blowing you know blowing smoke, but no. that's but that's true. I actually went back to my school for career day, and you know of course I'm in the music business, so I wound up in the music room. But everybody from the uh, TV industry, you know, I went to a pretty big high school, so it's like you know the guy from Bravo was there, the CEO for you know this channel and that channel, and now they're all trying to do exactly what we're doing yeah. because even live TV to them is still delayed five minutes. You can't interact with the host directly like we do here. Now you got Facebook Live, but you didn't have that back then. Yeah. We invented Facebook Live basically by doing what we were doing through the website, right? We kind of did. Uh, and nobody believed us. Nobody believed us. And nobody us. believed in us. Yeah. I still have some emails. I, I want to find them where people go, I don't get it. I don't understand. How does this work? Yeah. I spent more time explaining myself. I was like, ah, forget it. They don't get it. <laughs> but we get it. We got it. And, and, and we have a real good fan base, and it continues to grow. Um, and it has continued to grow over the, the, the months and years that we're doing this. And, and when you look at some of the people who, who watch, I mean, there's racetrack promoters who watch the show. They won't admit it, but it, they're on. You know, they don't comment. They want the old chat room we have, used to have. People don't use that anymore because they're going through Facebook Live and then they're sharing it with their friends and, and, and whatnot. So it's, it's really a, a great opportunity, and I want to thank you for that opportunity. Um, so, you know, it's, like, it's like going to, like, guys who race, they look forward to Saturday. Right. No matter what happened last week, or what happened during the week, they look forward to getting their car or their truck ready and going racing. And, and with me, is, you know, I look forward to coming here on Mondays. You guys have done 400 shows, 400 <laughs> of anything. Is huge. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a, you know that that's a huge number, and and to have a fan base and to 
yeah. be innovative from the beginning when you were doing this live streaming. Like you yeah. said, nobody really knew what that was about. Honestly, I didn't even know what it was about. All but I knew was that. All I knew is that you, you, I'll tell you exactly where it started. We started an internet radio station, and that was easy to do. Everybody was doing that. Right. And then we actually had a heavy metal belly dancing troupe that wanted to come on. Nope. Right, a heavy they metal belly much. dancing troupe. I'm like, you know what? That's it's pointless to have them on unless people can see yeah. this, right? Yeah. So we started messing around with it and made it happen with video. And I was like, look at this. We're, we're actually putting video out there. And they never came on, but that was really what started it. Right. That was the incentive to say, you know what? Just listening kind of stinks unless you can see what's happening. Well, you brought it to a, new, to a new level. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And you know what? I, I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I would get these these connections like if you we had a show host uh, dear dad and he said did you ever look to see at the people that are your friends on Twitter and you go and you look and all the friends that are on on these social media sites they're all like the heavy hitters from all the big networks right they're not like Joe Blow down the street they're you know this CEO that guy they're all connected with me on LinkedIn you know I had people from the Howard Stern show calling me up out of the blue like, how does these people know us Opie and Anthony, we had uh, Rick Delgado who came here and did a show um, with us for years. Hmm. And, uh, you know, from, from Opie and Anthony, he was a producer that made Opie and Anthony famous. I mean, they went from being zero, being last in, in prime time, mm -hmm. to being number one in prime time in six months. That's never happened. Right. Yeah. And they got closer to Howard Stern than any other radio show ever did. And he yeah. was the producer that made that happen. Yeah. He came here to do a show. Right. And I'm like, how do you know about this? He goes, everybody's talking about this. Yeah. They know about you. And without giving away any names or, or sharing any of our secrets, we had a big, big production company interested in us at one time. Yeah. And it didn't happen, not because of anything we did, there was nothing that we did, but it no, was, it was it, they came out of the blue, and it's a name that if I said right now, everybody that's listening would know exactly whose name it is. <laughs> now, maybe not so, so good, but, and the money was ridiculous. It was, it was, it was ludicrous. It was like, okay. As, as it was said to me, it would be a life-changing opportunity. That was a, that was a life-changing opportunity, yes. Thanks for, for all of us involved. And it's because because of what we did, because yeah. of what we built. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, Mr. John Visconti III will give you an opportunity to talk. I can't believe you've been quiet so long. I know. After sitting it's, in the car for five hours. My mind hours. is wheeling right I know, now. I, yeah, I know. I can take over the show right now. So we're now. going to take a break. and we come back, we'll have some NASCAR news, and uh, Mr. Visconti will uh, share some stuff with us, things that is shareable when we come back. Hey Chuck, That's hey bad. Joe, it's Christine, your old producer. Just wanted to say congratulations. 400 episodes of Five Off, Five On. Keep rocking, guys, and here's to 400 more. Hey, hey what's up? Oh, I said, was going to say what's up for some reason. Hey, hey we're set it off, and you're watching the In Radio TV Network. Hey Joe, hey Chuck, it's Mike Jarecki from My Race News. Congratulations on your 400th episode of Five Off, Five On. Hey, just got one question though. How come me and John Viscani aren't there today celebrating? I got a limo outside waiting to head out there. Call me. Music Shop of Master. 
1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hi there, this is Buddy from Less Than Jake, and you are listening to In Radio TV. You're probably watching it, too. Hey, it's Todd Merkel from Merkel Racing Engines on Long Island. Joe, Chuck, congratulations on your 400th episode of Five Off, Five On. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Peterson here. Alan Peterson. From Checker One Motorsports. We want to congratulate you on your 400th episode of Five on Five. We were so glad to be part of it in the past. Congratulations, guys. Congrats, guys. You did good, though. Those, those videos, they... Wow, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed by the, the things that. Wait, you haven't even seen them all yet. I know, and then there's some that we. If, if we showed the videos of what you're telling me, we'd have a show of just videos. Wait until you see Jimmy Rennox. We had to powder his head a couple of times. <laughs> we got to shine. Uh, and I'm I'm one to talk, right? Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting there. Hey, you know some some. I don't want to say sad news, but disturbing news. Um, Tyler Dippo, Grand Outdoor Truck Series driver. Uh, has been indefinitely suspended by NASCAR. The 19-year-old um, native of Walking, New York, has been suspended for actions detrimental to stock car racing, which is in the rule book as 12-4A. He's, uh, what's going to happen now is the two-time Pinty Series champ, DJ Ken Kennington, uh, drove the 02 truck this past weekend, and uh, it's still up in the air what's going to happen. Uh, the Walkill police have announced that uh, Dippel was arrested and charged with criminal possession of a controlled substance. What a waste, 19 years old. I know you've competed on that series. You know this individual. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I don't want to speculate. Um, I know the family, I know Tyler, I, I know there are a lot of circumstances. What you had just read is a very generic. Right. You know, there's there's two sides to every story, and then as they say, there's the truth. Um, I've been around the Dipple family. I've been around their race team. Um, personally, my feeling is I don't I don't think um, what happened was something that was uh, in it, within his control. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have too much of the inside information, but I, I do know the family, and I do know that he was uh, randomly drug tested at Bristol, which was just a week before, and he right. passed with flying colors. Um, there is a lot of rumor out there about what happened with the race and the infraction this weekend before he got to the track. I don't want to speculate on it, but um, in my heart of hearts, I know the family, I know, I know Tyler, I spend a lot of time with him. Uh, I don't believe what he did was something that was uh, malicious or self, self, what's the word, uh, self-induced. I think there was, a, there was circumstances around him getting to a particular place through customs, I believe, and they went through everyone's bags that were in the, in the vehicle, and um, one of the bags, which was not his, was went through, and someone's medicine was in that particular bag, and, you know, 
again, circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to speculate, but in my heart of hearts, I don't think that Tyler did anything um, maliciously. I think it was just a set of circumstances that he got caught up in, mm -hmm. and I think any one of us could understand how that could happen. Yeah, if that's if that's the case. If that's uh, the case. If that's the case. And, and the thing with NASCAR, and I, and I know they're trying to keep us a nice image, and we're, mm -hmm. we're all milk, milk and cookie guys, and and we know that's not true. But without, let me let me step back. In America, you're innocent until proven guilty. True. So let's investigate, in my opinion, let's investigate what happened. Let's investigate what went on. Let the local authorities do Handle their it. investigation. Right. If he's guilty at that point, hey, you know, like you said, let's take, let's get the cup out, let's do right. blood test. <clears throat> hey, you're, you're all good. Like, let's see what comes of this. And if it comes with that, he did in fact violate any laws or rules, oh, yes. boom, you're done. If he didn't, it's, right. it's a hush, hush, quiet, quiet. Right, put it away. Done. Let and be careful, know. more careful next time. Right. I just don't think that, uh, you know, there's that fine line between does NASCAR take a stand right away? Right. And, you know, I saw something on the internet today that there was a crew member or crew chief that was uh, suspended, random drug test, something to do with coffee, diet coffee. I, don't, I didn't read through the whole article, but... He's been around the business for 20 years, uh, stand-up guy, randomly drug tested. That happens throughout the, the garage area, yeah. which you know, we've all been there. Um, and something in that diet coffee was on their no-go list. Right. And he had to be suspended, f further pending what, what goes on. But I mean, that, that's, that's coffee. You know, right. something in coffee or right. diet coffee made him come up dirty, so to speak. Yeah. So, you know, there's a fine line, and I hope that for Tyler's sake and his family's sake and his sponsor's sake that, you know, it, NASCAR was wrong at that point. But if, I hope so. If, I do too because I like the family and I know them well. If, if not, then that's, you know, he, then he set his own, his own bet. Yeah. I know you got a lot of things going on. And you, it seems like you always do and there's things you can talk about these again. Right. What can you tell us about the Scotty Motorsports moving forward in, in 2019 and maybe even into 2020? Well, I, as all of you know, uh, very excited from, uh, I have one of my favorite two people here, Jimmy and uh, Rennick and CJ. Both of them have been a big part of where I am today. Um, we have, you know, when we had gone initially from the modified division into the K&N division, uh, it was a big jump for us. It was a big leap of faith for, for a team, for, for Marie and I. And, you know, that part of our lives, they welcomed us very warmly down in North Carolina. Uh, we just progressed into something that was, it actually became bigger than I thought it could become in a very, very short amount of time. And with that, you know, you ride that wave, we've now um, established where for 2020, we're going to have a two car team. Uh, as of right now, I don't want to mention um, our, our driver's names, but um, Brandon McReynolds, who was our driver as of now and had, who had started with us, he and uh, his camp and I have uh, made some arrangements where we're both going to pursue different interests, which on a handshake, which is great. And he's, uh, I wish him all the best. He has a lot going on with Noah, and Noah has a lot Noah going Gregson. on. Noah Gregson. And Noah has a lot going on with Junior Motorsports. And Brandon gave us as much time as possible to run our car mm -hmm. when he could. I knew that in the beginning he would be giving us a part-time schedule, right. and I think at this point with the success that we've had and we're building our program, I need to run a full, a full schedule next season. Yeah. And that's where we're at. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm very proud of our team. With the two-car team will be a, a number seven team and a number 74 team. So we're, we're, we're keeping Dad's number regardless of where we run, but oh, it's, yeah. uh, that's his tribute. But we're, we're looking pretty, uh, pretty stout right now. We're having fun with this. Excellent, excellent. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but before we go, um, just want to say one more thing in, in the NASCAR news world. Joey Chitwood III uh, is resigning from the International Speedway Corp, effective November 30th. Um, he is the first major departing head guy at ISC amid, after, I should say, NASCAR's acquisition of International Speedway Corp. Um, several reports indicated that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. Um, with Joey Chitwood, he came on board almost as, as a name. 
I, I, I don't think he had, and, and I could be wrong, I don't think he had any say. I don't think he, he, he was more of a name because people weren't connecting with International Speedway Corp. And they were losing their connections with NASCAR right. because of Brian France not being involved the way his dad was and his grandfather were. So uh, there's some big things going on in NASCAR for, for International Speedway Corp to be bought out by NASCAR. Basically, it's the same board of directors, the same people. But I, I think for, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not an accountant, for tax purposes and business purposes, they're just merging into one to save money. I mean, you, you're in the business world, and, and, and you've had many businesses over the over It time. could be. I wouldn't doubt that that's a, a typical thing. Yeah. You know, there everybody in this world that we're living in right now is is squeezing every little cost because uh, that's really where the, the nuts and bolts are. You know, it's like uh, I liken it to race car driving, right? I mean, you got a bolt that's, you know, an inch and a quarter and it's hanging over half an inch. You got to cut that bolt off of there because that's weight. Right. And I think that's what's happening right now. I think everything is so tight that, uh, you know, and when you think about it and you start cutting back all the expenses and then you realize, oh my God, look at all the stuff I cut that I could have saved for the last 20, 30 years. Right. Yeah. Do they think about that? Yeah. You know, but they're cutting every little, you know. When times are good, it doesn't matter. Are we getting coffees right. for the whole office? It's two hundred dollars a day. You know right. what I mean? Right. What are we doing yeah. over there? Maybe we should look at that. Maybe we should get a coffee machine over here. You know, the, the, I mean, every little thing. <laughs> you know, so let's true. get regular cups here. These styrofoam <laughs> cups are killing us. You know, they're putting us over the top. You laugh, but this is—I I deal I with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And sometimes you just shake your head. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Sometimes it's penny wise and pound foolish, right. but I think that's what it's boiling down to. I mean, because you know we've all uh, you know experienced the NASCAR thing, and I had this discussion with somebody today. The millennials are just not watching TV. They're not listening to radio. No. They've got their phones and uh, they're listening to their own stuff and yeah. watching their own stuff. And it's yeah. a different world now. Yeah, it is. And you know millennials are up into the thirties. So we're not talking about eleven teenagers, years, right. teenagers yeah, anymore. Right. You know, 20 we're 20 talking years. about we're talking about older people now. You know, John, that's, I, a, that's I, a big I, portion I, of the population. Yeah, yeah. John, I, again, I, 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 we appreciate your support of our show, and and I'm plugging it out there. And we walked around Dover, and, and you introduced me as, as the host of the Five. You didn't course. say, right? You know, and then after we were talking, and it's my very good friend, right? And, right. But you, you help push our show. And we well, appreciate I, I, that. Listen. I appreciate what you guys do. I know how hard you work. Again, like you had said before, it's not an hour show. It's a 12-hour show, and you view it for an hour. I know how hard you guys work, and you've been working at this a long time. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of it many times, and my dad, like you said. So if we could help each other, you've helped me get my name out there a little bit, and if I could help you guys get your name out there a little bit, you know what, it's, it's just one hand washes the other. That's what friends you know, are about. Absolutely. So it's pretty cool. You guys and, do a good job. And to dedicate this show to, to the memory of your dad. I can't means, even. Don't means even. a lot to me. Yeah, I know. And, and, and here's a name that you probably remember. Um, I spent probably an hour with this gentleman at Marty Himes yesterday. Okay. Wayne Carroll. Wow. Yeah, that was, uh, that's a big name. That's and a name. He, I don't have to say this, but at my dad's wake, you were there, and I thank everybody, you know, from the bottom of, of the Visconti family hearts. There were hundreds and hundreds of people oh, yeah. at that wake. It was, it was amazing. It really was. It was just a nice tribute to my dad. Um, Roger Roxy, big fan of his. My father was, he was a big fan of my dad's. Brought his 64th flag that he won, Roger's flag, and gave it to me and said, I want this to be with your dad. I was like, wow. People brought hoods from the race car and let, you know, brought them people. <laughs> it was just, th that tribute, what you, what you guys did, the, you had said a bunch of really nice words about my dad and whatnot. He loved racing. And the biggest thing that he loved was the camaraderie around what everyone does. The Rennicks, the Laymans, you know, the Messeries, going all the way back to, to the Bruno Brackies. My father was involved with every era. And when we started to run our own team, he was so excited about it. He was our biggest supporter, you know, and uh, I just, like I had said, I want to thank everybody who uh, called, texted, sent flowers, emails. It was beautiful. And if I could thank every one of you, I would, but we don't got, you know, a hundred hours. So uh, I just want to thank all of you again. Well, that's why tonight's the 400 show is in, in, is in his memory. 
Thank um, you. He was good to us, and, and and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of you out there that are good to us, and and uh, but there was a, a there was a, a closeness. Yeah. yeah, there was a closeness, and uh, it's hard to it's hard to I can't even say the words without getting emotional. It's just there's a closeness. So anyway, we're going to take a break, and we come back. Uh, we have another guy sitting there in the wings here that wants his opportunity in the hot seat. Um, we got to just adjust the lights a little bit for him. <laughs> So we're going to take a break. <laughs> we'll we'll be right back. <laughs> hey guys, Jim Arenick Jr. here. The Metropolitan Recycling Sunny's Collision Mike's Heavy Duty Number no. 7 Super Pro Truck from Riverhead Raceway. We want to congratulate you all on the 400 show. I can't believe you guys have done 400 shows. I think Visconti's doing the counting over there. Well, either which way, guys. Congratulations. All the best to Here's to another 100 shows. Chin done. Hi, I'm Remington. I'm Emerson. And I'm Sebastian. We're Palais Royale, and you're watching in Radio TV. There we go. Hey, Joe and Chuck. This is NASCAR Modified driver Joey Cipriano from Waterbury, Connecticut, wishing you guys a happy 400th episode of the 5 Off, 5 On Show. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in radio.com. Congratulations on 400 shows. It's a great milestone. Continued best of luck on your show. Hey, this is Chris Lesch Jake, and if inravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. Shop of Master, 1 800 Hey Dude, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Master. Call 1 800 Hey Dude or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hi, this is Mike Jarecki from My Race News, and you're watching the Inravio TV Network. Hey guys, this is Jibs from Ocean's Eye, Alaska, and you're watching Inravio TV Network. Hey Joe, it's Paul Descalfani from the Glory Days Show. Congratulations on the 400th episode of the 5 Off 5 On Racing Show on the Inravio TV Network takes a lot of hard work and dedication to be on the air for 25 years. And I just... What? It's not 25 years? Oh. Well, congratulations anyway. Uh, if it's not 25 years, what am I wasting my... Never mind, Joe. You know I'm just kidding. Congratulations, and here's to the next 25 years or 400 episodes, whichever comes first. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, sitting to my right, Chuck's left, uh, Jimmy Rennick, driver of the 
a NASCAR Weekly All American Series Super Pro Truck. Yes, sir. One of the best. I'm not not one of the, the best looking hauler I've ever seen. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Long, long trip. From Pleasure Howard to be Beach. here. Yeah, it was a journey. I know the other hours. guy came from Staten Island. Yeah, you know, guy, he got the helicopter, right? Yeah, he does. He says he drives. Yeah. He's got a heliport down the block. <laughs> Joking, pretending like he's sitting in traffic on the Bell Parkway. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got the hovering thing going that's, on outside, Suffolk County PD. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, please. What's that movie? What's that movie where the, the guy, the, the helicopter's over his house and he kept looking out the window mm. and it was still following him? Yes, yes, good Yeah. That's yeah. what he does on a weekly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, before we get into it, just uh, the Xfinity Series drivers are ineligible to compete in the the, uh, the Triple Truck Challenge and uh, Series Championship races. They're limiting the number of races a driver could drop down from. Like the Cup, they're limited to five in 2020, so they cannot uh, take advantage of the lesser divisions. And they uh, and also beginning in 2020, the maximum starting field will be set. The Xfinity had 36 cars and 31 cars based on qualifying times, four provisionals based on the rule book, and one past champion. So that should be uh, interesting uh, going forward. Anyway, so Jerry, tell us. What you got going, going, on? going over the notes here. Yeah, I got notes. People yeah, think I wing this. Uh, you probably are winging it with that penmanship. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, we got some stuff going on. Uh, as you know, with the Super Pro truck, right. we went into uh, 2019 with the hopes of winning, and uh, we were able to accomplish that. Right. As um, really proudly as a whole team, from Chucky Stoyer doing our setups, to um, you know Scott, CJ, Timmy, Billy, uh, Big Rich, the little kids, Scott, uh, Brother Turd, Matt, and um, Ethan. Uh, it's been a whole team effort, and um, it's been great. We were fortunate we got two wins, and what do you know? We got disqualified again. No. Yeah, we kind of had aluminum shocks in the truck that I bought used. Wait, wait, wait. You kind of had them? Um, yeah, had we, they were in there for the beginning of the season. Okay. Not the malicious, trust me. I tell right. you, if it was. We weren't. But there were aluminum shocks. Went through tech for like, I don't know, the eighth time right. in a year, and all of a sudden they're illegal. But it is rule, it's in the rule book. You can't complain about wanting officiating, and when it's done against you, you can't complain. So we wound up getting DQ'd. Okay. But that was that. Uh, pretty much took us out of the championship battle. Right. That was our, you know, I guess maybe the 100% goal. Uh -huh. We were 50% wanting to get wins, and the other half go for the championship. Okay. So that took our hopes out. And, uh, but it was positive. We finally won. Yep. We put a lot of work into it. Yeah. You know, and um, from uh, Butterfinger on the radio over there, good old Timmy, he's... Um, no, he's, he's a world of difference. He, I'm telling you, it, you, I can't believe what a difference. But having him on the radio is like, it's like a calm suit. Right. It, it just is. It's like listening to Bocelli, cruising down the road, nice and calm. Yeah. <laughs> telling you, it's great. But it, we worked out good. And um, today we were fortunate, um, and I figured we'd announce it here, that we're going to Mott Racing. Nice. Congrats. Next year. We'll have the car out next week. Uh, well, this week, Saturday. We plan on bringing it out to the track, hoping to have it in JCR colors, uh -huh. um, but we'll see what happens with that. Right. We're, we're attempting to, at least. You going to attempt to run the full schedule, or do you got to work your way into it slowly? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know yet. Okay. It's one of those things that when I started this stuff back in 83, everybody looked at the modifieds, even from back in the day at Freeport, you know? And, um, you know, as you run them through the ranks and you get the ice slip and all that, and then Freeport, I mean, uh, Riverhead, with all the mods, and it's like, wow, like who doesn't want one of those things? Just listening to them. I mean, we still watch them when they drive through the pits. We see 20 of them at a time. We still watch them. Yeah, yeah. You know, listen to them. So who wouldn't want one? So I look at it as like this. Got a mod. We're fortunate that everything worked into place, and we were able to get it. We'll pick it to the track. We'll see what we got. And um, basically, I can always say I got a modified before I go out. I ain't getting no younger, but got a modified. Yeah. Now, you planning on doing, like, just the local stuff, or are you going to hit some of the other tracks as well? Um, to be honest with you, I want to just get in the, in the car over at Riverhead and see what we got. Like, I've never so even been to one. So do Saturday Night Riverhead stuff and kind of get your feet wet a little bit? Yeah, the last one I was in was Timmy Contarino's. Oh, wow. And that was back in yeah. the early 90s. That was the way, yeah. Yep. And that was, you know, a long time ago, back when I was sponsoring that car. Right. But right. that was it. But it was like one of those things, like, 
the opportunity came, we were able to swing it, we were able to get it. Mm -hmm. Everything just fell into place for once instead yep. of falling to pieces, and Good here we are. You. Good. Good for you. So looking forward to it. So instead of the truck, you're gonna do that? Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm getting rid of Gemma. No, I love my truck. Yeah. I do, I really do love my truck. So you're gonna do both? Yeah. The truck is gonna be the primary right now. Right. Okay. So as of right now. You know, things will change, I'm sure. But um, for the most part, the truck will be the primary. And uh, like I said, Friday afternoons, when she comes off the jack stands and is in the garage, when we get rid of the loader and the bippy, I'm, I'm just, I mean, you know, I'm just a little prejudiced with it. But I think it's really badass looking. I just like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It really is. But um, yes, thank you for all that. And um, honored to be here, of course, because we just went right into that, yeah. especially on the 400 okay. show and coming to, uh, you know, dedicating this thing to uh, Cookie. We all love Cookie. Uh, we all love Cookie. Yeah, great man. Uh, Got his decal on the car. Well, I should say on the truck. Yeah. It's kind of getting a little hard between the car and the truck now with a little bit of uh, right. talking. The race vehicle. Let's go. Yeah, one of the race units. So now you're as happy as a puppy with two peckers now. You got a car and you got a truck and you don't yeah, know what no, no. Angel ain't too happy about this. That I tell you. Yeah. She ain't thrilled at all. You only live once. Oh, no, what no, 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 no. Oh. She, she's like, oh, what are you kidding me? I don't want to go there as it is. Now you got two of them? Are you nuts? <laughs> Yeah. So we got we got the Ginzaloon Express Junior now, so um, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. All right. But um, yeah, hey, you only live once, right? Yes, and Go like I said, can never say I didn't have one finally. That's right. It took 36 years of racing hey, to, you know what? <laughs> to be involved. I should That's say 36 right. years. Jerry, I'm still looking, Jimmy. Takes you get you. Out of here. <laughs> you know, it's not an easy task to compete in any of these divisions. You know, I no. mean, you saw it. It's, it's, <clears throat> Excuse me. It's it's you a gotta lot. be you gotta be on your game, boy. I'll tell you. Yeah. Any any division, you gotta be on your game. You can't be off a little bit. I will tell you, from the last what was It'll it, the three hundred and fifty at show? Well, John thought it was the three and a quarter. Yeah. When we were here last time, yeah. from that show there is when I met Sully. And then Sully introduced me to Chuck, and pretty much the rest is history because yeah. that truck's been pretty damn good, considering I don't do nothing to it other than do air pressure and try to run a certain amount of stagger. But um, yeah, from the last show till now, that was the difference in the world. Yeah. From John introducing me to Glenn, Glenn taking me like under his wing as a stepchild, introducing me to Chucky, and then the crew helping out. Mm -hmm. Timmy on the radio is definitely world of difference. You know, you, you say that, and I can remember right before that, the rare appearances I have at Riverhead. And, and when I go to the racetrack, it's like, and you're there, that's my home, you know. Mm -hmm. And your, your practices were horrendous for you. You got out, you said, load it up, I'm going home. Oh, yeah, I've done that. Remember? I've broken Remember? a lot of things. CJ's witnessed all and, that. And, and you were all <laughs> upset. You were done. You were, you were going to take the truck to, the, to, the, uh, to wherever, cut it up, get rid of it. You were done. Yeah. And CJ and his guys, they were parked. And boom, they jumped on it. They made all kinds yes. of stuff, changes. And, and you, were still, you were still going home. Yeah, it was very frustrating. We went for a little walk. I have a very you, short fuse. You can't do that to those guys. I said, no. you can't do that to those guys. They, they put a lot of work and, into and it. And then you, you calmed down, you went out, and you, you had a fairly good run, and they got better and better after that. And, and racing's about, the, the, in the pit area, everybody will help you. Yeah. On the racetrack, it's a whole different story, but I, I, I never forgot that day, and you know, and CJ and his dad and, and, and Timmy and, and, and all the guys. And then John, were, John, and John opened John, up his yeah. shop to take my yeah. truck out there. You know, and, and I was hesitant, and he came over and says, are you kidding me? Bring this truck over there. We and brought the truck out to the somebody shop. Somebody was like, oh, I'll take it out for you. I'll tell you what's wrong. And, and Cookie said, he sat there. He goes yeah. to me, he goes, they don't, they're not going to drive it the way Jimmy drives it. That's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah, he pulled me on the side. Yeah. Don't yeah. let nobody <laughs> drive the truck. This yep. is your truck. Yep. Nobody's going to drive like you. They're going to tell yeah. you the way they like it. Yeah. The way they like it doesn't make a difference. Right. It's what you like. Yeah. Me and Cook are sitting on our scooters. <laughs> he has hip surgery. Yeah. My foot's hanging out. Yeah, when he wasn't pulling wheelies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been down that road before. I mean, with my car, same thing. I had, you know, so many years where I had a hard, hard time to just to get a handle on it. I knew nothing. And when I started, I, I knew absolutely nothing. And I was like, I'll take your car out for you. But really, you, they're not going to drive it the way you drive it. Yeah. You know, and it's, you have to really know. And you know what? It, it's frustrating as all get out. And yeah. I understand that. Yeah, David I was he drove it. He got out of the truck. He told me I'd kill my crew if I had to drive this truck. Dave Rigotti. And that used to be his truck back, you know, a yeah. few years ago. Yep. I asked him to take it out to see what was going on. Because truthfully, I just get in and then drive. And I guess it's a bad thing because you can't really relay too much. I tell him it's pushing like a dump truck. That's my worst thing, pushing. But yeah, he wrote, they, 
and then cook it. Don't you do it. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Nobody That's, drives. In that voice, that voice, like, if you know, if you don't do what he said, you're going for a one-way walk. Yeah, well, well basically, he, he was like, he was like Cookie Whispers in yeah. a scooter. Yeah. You ever, see, you ever see Whispers when he's over there like this? Yeah, yeah. Well, Cookie was in a scooter. You had to bend down, and he was, like, telling you, like, Cookie Whispers. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. my God! It was good. Good for you. Edward. I'm glad to see everything's working out for you. Yeah, we're gonna go back this weekend. We haven't been here in about four weeks. I All think right. it is, right? Four weeks? I don't know. It seems like a long time. Yeah, it's quite a while. Yeah, CJ's holding up both hands. Yeah, he needs that to count. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, hey, you know, I, I forgot before. There's there's a, there's an individual who who's always supported our show from show one, and for show fifty, for show 100, 150, 200, 250. Um, he always gave me the, the Tuesday morning talk, the critique. You shouldn't have said this. You should have elaborated more on that. Nice job. Not such a nice job. Uh, tell Chuck this. <laughs> tell Chuck that. <laughs> you need to do this. And he'd come, and uh, he was a Vietnam vet, so he was still, you know, he had his hat, he had his sleeveless T-shirts. But he came to the anniversary show dressed like he was going to a wedding. And uh, my old buddy, W.J., Walter Johnston, um, I made a promise to him that he'd never miss a show. He still hasn't. And um, what can I say? <laughs> I, I miss him. I don't know when I first met him. Doesn't matter. Um, he was like my big brother. He still hasn't missed the show. We'll be back. I'm Chuck. Hey, man, congratulations from Gil Quarterly down here in Mooresville, North Carolina. Unbelievable. You've made it to 400 already. You guys rock. Keep it going. Great job again. Village Music Shop of Master. 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hey Joe, hey Chuck, this is Bobby Sater from Mooresville, North Carolina, Team Penske. Happy 400th episode of Five Off, Five On. I can't believe it's been 20 years since we raced against each other back at Riverhead Raceway in the Charger Division. Thank you for continuing support and promoting the grassroots racing we so much love. Here's the next 400 episodes. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Willie. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, and you're punching the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. Chuck. This is John Kazali from Kazali Racing in Long Island needs a dress trip. Just want to congratulate you guys on your 400th episode of Five Off, Five On. Keep up the good work. You guys do a bang up job. Love being on your show. And uh, all I can say is again, Joe, Chuck, congratulations. What's up, guys? This is Assuming We Survive, and you're watching in Radio TV Network. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. The Admiral and the General from Fantasy Baseball Code Red 
and we just want to congratulate Joe and Chuck on their 400th episode of Five Off and Five On. You guys keep on racing. You're on. We're off. We're out. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Good job, fellas. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, you have a body. I have a body. Look at that. Uh, to my right, Chuck's left, uh, CJ Lehman. CJ, what are you doing with yourself these days? Ah, same stuff, really. Yeah. You know, just uh, grabbing try, a, trying to grabbing live the, the wheel, dream. turning left. That's it. Trying to live the dream. Uh, you're, you're still hanging with these guys? Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jimmy's always a pleasure, but hanging with that other guy, you know, <laughs> gets tough sometimes. It's, fun, it's never oh, a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, 2019 is coming to an end. What, what do you got planned for 2020? I uh, really don't know. Uh, okay. Hoping to be doing the same thing I'm doing this year. You know, okay. driving a 33 car for Ken right. Hagee. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, right now we're, we're looking like 2019 is going to be cut short. Um, you know, long season had some mishaps. You know, might might be out of money real soon here, but. Mm -hmm. um, We'd like to try to put it together better for next year and uh, come back strong. Yeah. Now, Bill Batch, he's watching. Um, he said that you're the only to driver to win in his old car. Uh, was that the 19? Yeah. The 19 figure eight car, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that car's actually still out there, and yeah. it's been running pretty good this year. You know? Uh, Bill Batch and I had Bill at 22. I was at whatever number I was that season. Um, we, we, we beat and banged each other. Let me rephrase that. I beat and banged on him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> One time we took ourselves, I took him out and myself, like in turn two of lap one. And he gets out of his car, and, and I, was, I was on the deal kind of, so I was parked all the way up towards the front by the, the, by the, the, uh, the handicapper shack, right. and he was parked midway down with Roger, and he's coming up to me, and I see him walking. And I'm like, oh, man. It's going to happen. Whoa. <laughs> and he, all he said, he goes, Joe, on the first lap, the first freaking lap, Joe, I went, I, I didn't see you. And he just walked away shaking his head. And, and now he never misses a show. Stuff happens, you know? You know? John Visconti's notorious for being out on the first lap. Green, green, green. Green, green, green. Dude, you all right? Yeah. Hey, you know, just because they say green, that doesn't mean you mash the gas pedal. You know what I mean? It yeah, took me yeah. years to learn that. Well, I mean, if you're on the front row, it's, it's all go. But yeah. when you're behind other cars, you got to, yeah. you know, mesh up. Yeah, and, and I was usually in the back. Not because I got handicapped there, because I had to run a concert. Right. So, you know, just go, go, you know? I thought they yell green, you smash the gas, you spin the car and crash into the walls. And yeah, I've that. done that too. That's Visconti yeah. style. <laughs> That's why he's got other guys driving a car for him nowadays, oh, you know? You know what? It's funny. It's like, and, and, I, and I equate this to baseball. Earl Weaver had like a lifetime batting average of like 097. Never hit a home run. He was horrible. Never made the big leagues. He was always in the minors. And then when he became like the manager in charge, he was a championship caliber. Sometimes you just don't have it when you, you play the game, you know? Yeah. One of the guys that just don't have it playing the game, but... But they got the X's and O's all worked out they right, do, you know? Right? They do. It just works yeah. out like that sometimes. Yeah. I would have liked to have one of those shirts too, but I guess they don't have my size. Nah, that's just for big time K&N owners. Yeah. You know? Well, you remember, uh, you remember my crew chief. Yeah. So, uh, you know, his whole thing was, how come you can't drive this car? This car should be driving itself. So I said, all right. It's, pra it's practice. Yes. Well, I said that. That was the, that was the mistake. <laughs> I said, all right, I'm trying somebody else's car out. I'm going to be behind you. So when they toss the green flag for practice, you just kind of speed up slow. I'm going to come around you, right? Well, he decides he's going to mash the gas. Spins to the infield, so mm -hmm. I go out by the wall. I said, and I told him this. I said, listen, the last thing we want to do is wreck two cars. Right. So be careful. He comes out of the infield at 1,000 miles an hour, <laughs> hits the wall head on, and I crash into the side of my car with the other guy's car. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, this couldn't have happened any, any yeah. better than that. No, I'm like, what no. the hell's going on here? If it can't happen, it will in racing, you know? But that's, you know, a guy who's, you know, you know some, some guys doing the work, know, figures he can drive the car. Yeah. They, they, they do things and they maybe aren't ready or shouldn't. It's just, and, and we have, like, you know, NASCAR unveiling another 
uh, rule change, proposed rule change for 2020, um, is that uh, break, beginning in 2020, drivers with more than three full-time seasons in the Cup Series will be limited to five races each year in both, both Xfinity and trucks. In addition, drivers earning points in the Cup Series are barred from uh, running in the regular season finale and all playoff races. So they want to make it purely the guys in that division. So that's, I think that's, that's a, a good thing. I think that's a nice thing. Yeah. I think so too. I think that's a long time coming. It, uh, it, it was. And I was, I, you know, I was always okay with whoever shows up to race should be able to race. But what's happening now, and, and, and when Brian France and that gang made it so they didn't get any points for those races, I was like, why are they bothering them? Isn't what's it the all point? about the yeah. points? You know, and, and then now they're taking valuable championship points away from regulars. Right. You know, and, and of course they're going to run in the top ten. And, and we look at look, look with Kyle Busch in the Truck Series. You know, Absolutely, it's it like winning every time. You know, and, and that can't, that can't, that can't, it shouldn't happen. So it shouldn't happen. You, you know, let those guys do, r r race it out amongst themselves. I mean, yeah. what are you getting in there for? Oh, you get it on both sides of the fence, though. You know, you got the the big guys coming down, and maybe stealing positions and money and points from these other guys. But at the same time, you know younger guys that are breaking in, right. you're racing against the best right. and, and you're honing your skills against the best. So it, it's the best of both worlds by limiting them. But, you know, I, I understand the, the cup guys too. Yeah, they they want to come down and they want to race, you know. Yeah. We all go to races at the end of the year that aren't exactly. for points, you know, yeah. just for bragging rights. Yeah. No, now, you know, people are saying congratulations for 400 shows and, and, and I, uh, Chuck, you've been on this side or that side for all 400 of them. And there's a lot of people that kind of got me, you know, from, from what I've done in, in racing. I've been involved in this sport for more than your lifetime, probably close to 50 years. A lot more than my lifetime. As a fan, driver, owner, crew guy, official. And over the years, I met some very nice people. I think we have some pictures of some of the people that, that I met over the years. And um, it, it, I look back and... and I actually got to sit and talk with these. I, I think we have them to, to ready to queue up. It, it was, it made me look ahead. You know, what do I want to do in this sport? What do I, how do I want to do this? And uh, there's uh, myself and Burt Myers, and I'm sporting that real nasty beard. I don't know what I was thinking when I had that. Uh, that, I, that that's, that's horrible, isn't it? You could say it. It's, it's better than what I can grow. Wow. Uh, Burt Myers, a Southern Modified Tour champion. Um, class act by by all means um, there's a few other people we got there this is from 1998 the morning after Junior Johnson and AJ Foyt were inducted into the top 50 drivers of all time I just happened to be walking around the garage area um, AJ and Junior were talking and and I went up to Junior Johnson because I, I heard all these horror stories about <laughs> AJ Foyt being nasty. So I didn't want to get in his face. But Junior, being a nice guy, said, "You know, Junior, can I get a picture with you?" So he said, "Yeah, sure." And he takes the picture with me, and then he goes, he goes, "AJ, get over here. We got a fan." And and <laughs> and, and, and they took the picture. Um, there's a couple of more there. That uh, there's uh, I was in the Texas Longhorn Steakhouse, and there's a uh, Kurt Busch, and uh, I was pretty heavy in those. I was like close to 300 pounds in that picture. No way. Yeah, yeah. Really? I had like a 24 neck. And he was sitting there, and, and, and I went up to him. I said, can, can, can we have a beer together? So we went and had a beer. And as he's walking out, my friend says to me, get a picture, dude. So he took a picture at the doorway. So I nice. had some fun with him. We, we talked a little bit racing and, and what it takes and what the sacrifices. And here's my favorite all-time driver, Richard Petty. And see, see, there I look close to 300 pounds. Well, the facial hair offset it maybe in yeah, the first yeah. one. Yeah, look at that. I don't even have a neck. I go right to the shoulders. But Richard Petty is, 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 is my, my, my racing hero. And um, any time I've seen him at a racetrack, Richard has is, is welcomed me over to his hall that we sit down with and, 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 and have a Coca-Cola, even though I really shouldn't drink Coca-Cola. Uh, but, you know, and, and, and there's me and Ryan Newman back in my official days. Um, I had told Ryan Newman that my daughter was one of his biggest fans. And ever since that time, anytime he sees me, he comes over and he talks to me. So, um, Ryan Newman, he's, and I hate to say, I think it's, it's time for him to, to maybe do other things, but uh, who knows. But over the years, I've, I've been involved with a lot of people. And I know I went to, to Dover um, with Mr. Visconti there um, and walked around. He walked me around the garage area, introduced some new people, and, and, um, and, and plugged in our show. It was really nice. 
you know, it was, it was really nice. And, and it, was, it was good. It was fun. And uh, one, one of these days, gonna, gonna, you never know what could happen. Mr. Visconti just might be one of our marketing partners because, you know, because he loves us that much, right? What do you think, hey, I can see us right across Look the front. He, he can't even breathe now. He can't even breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a radio TV network right across the front hood. Right across the hood, right? With our Listen, logo. I'm, yeah. I don't see why not. Quarter panels for sale. You don't want yeah. to tell that guy you're going to give him money because he'll never leave you alone. Well, I didn't say I was giving him money. No, no, no. I'm giving them money. Oh, oh you're going to give them money? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's yeah. a good deal for you. Yeah. It's got a lot of it. It is. From what I heard. Oh, yeah. It's got a helicopter, too. Well, I also heard that it's <laughs> never. I won't even get. The stories that are told off camera, I can't share. But uh, <laughs> he's all choked up now. Look at him. Look at him. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left. I'm, uh, oh, we're at it. We're like, we've we're been at it. We're, we're, we're out of time when you sat down. Oh. Nah, no, we're it's all right. That's all right. right. Talk anyway. Good. Chuck, what do you got to say before we sign off? 400 shows is a long time. It is, Chuck. That's a lot of work. It is. A lot of parts and pieces, a lot of trips up to racetracks far and near, and mm -hmm. camera crews here and there. and A lot of hot dogs and beans. Hot dogs and beans. Yep. Well, For beans. You. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of hot dogs there. Yeah. But, um, uh, it's, uh, you know, when you think about how many parts and pieces that we use to put this show together. A lot. How many people, um, it's been, I mean, there's, there's no way we could have put all the videos together. No. So we'll probably be using these videos for the rest of the year, that yeah. uh, some of these videos we got. But it's, uh, and it, it's it, a it, lot of people have been involved in this show. And if you're one of the, the folks who, who sent us congratulatory videos, thank you. And they, they will air. Like I said earlier in the show, if we would have added videos, it would have been just a video show. And uh, we're not ready to do those, uh, use up a whole show for that. Right. I'm but I mean, still if, living. You, if you haven't sent your video yet, you can still send it because we're going to be using them. We, it's probably 100, if not more, yeah. videos. So, so we'll be using them over the course of the year. Yeah, so I, I want to thank everybody. One. And I know the closing credits are some things. Please, please don't, like in the movies, the movie ends and you leave. Watch the credits tonight because we, we, we have, we're thanking some people. Yeah, it is, uh, we revamped those credits, so you're probably going to want to, oh, we're getting a no. All right, so, again, We uh, didn't revamp the... Next week. Oh, next week. I jumped right. the gun on that. It'll make you, t make you tune in next week. Go to the back. Right. Well, yeah, next week is Memorial Day, so, uh, Labor Day. So we, we won't be We here. won't be laboring. We won't be here Labor Day. Um, we will be here the week after Labor Day. Right. Uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> but uh, we will be back. And uh, Chuck, I, I, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. And then the folks who watch, whether they watch in, in Facebook Live or in the chat room or just on their computers tonight live or during the week, there's a lot of you. I, I wish I could shake all your hands and give everybody a hug, but I can't do that. So just know that we appreciate everything you do. I want to appreciate uh, John Visconti coming out from Staten Island, five hours on the Belt Parkway. And, uh, and, and Jimmy Rennick coming from Howard Beach, he never misses a big show. Thank you, guys. And CJ, Absolutely. I guess he had nothing to do tonight, so he decided to join us. You tagged along. Well, well he, Visconti he gave me a call earlier on and said, hey, I'm doing a radio show. <laughs> and I only had to come from like seven minutes away, yeah, so I no. figured yeah. I'd stop by. And Bonnie, for all you do, and then get my last minute stuff that I send you sometimes because I, sometimes I forget, sometimes I'm at work and I can't do it. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I got to thank you guys. Uh, well, Joe, I want to thank you for everything that you do. You. I mean, you put a lot of effort into this show yeah. for the last eight years. It's a lot of, I got to thank my friend who, who's sitting in the corner there, Lisa. She, she puts up with me. She put, hey, John, 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 easy. <laughs> All right. Congratulate If I turn the camera, Marie will see. Sorry. <laughs> Every Monday, I'm, I'm stressed out, I'm, I'm flipping out, I, I tell her, leave me alone, I'm getting ready, and, and she puts up with it every, every Monday night, so, um, and then it becomes a long day because we usually go eat after, so thank you, babe, I appreciate that. All right, I, I got no more to say, and, and the control room is- Really? Like, we have no in. more to say? Yeah. Well, I do, but I, I'm getting this in the control room. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hook. The, I'm, I'm raising getting, the flag right now. <laughs> Everybody, again, thank you. Good night. Be safe. Be careful. Give somebody a hug. Tell me you love them. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody. Good night.